to another segment of Tales from the Blind Side. I got my brothers Jamal Jackson center stage and Todd Harriman is with me here today again to just talk about, you know, do we have to do it? I, I guess we kind of have to do it now. For a few more <laughs> weeks. We got to talk about three, seven, and one. Uh, oh, okay. For a, few, yeah. for a few more weeks, man. Yeah. Three, seven, and one. That's where we are right now. Three, seven, and one. The Eagles go down there. You know, they come out. You know, you have Seattle. And, you know, this was a game that you, you know that they need to win this if you want to have a chance to get into the playoffs. Seattle has whooped them, what, for the last seven games? I believe Seattle has had their number. And yeah, but go ahead. Who was expecting a win here? No, no one expected to win. No, I, I didn't expect the to point. win. I, you know, I definitely didn't expect to win. Yeah, I was hoping for a win, but didn't expect to win. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm definitely hopeful for the for the dub in this game, but dude, no one's thinking that we we're going to stand a chance against Seattle here. I actually thought it was a closer game than I was expecting it to be. You know, and. Before we get into like the negative stuff, you know, I think that the defense played pretty well uh, overall. Yeah, there were some mistakes and more penalties and stuff like that. But if there's bright spots in this, I think that the defense played pretty well. You know, what do you guys think? Yeah, I think the defense ball, you know, you look at how the, I thought our linebacker played. They came out and played a lot more discipline. Jalen Mills started throwing his body around a lot. You know what I'm saying? It was out there flexing, yeah. making some big plays. You know, uh, I thought that was um, encouraging. Our defensive front, you know, they were, they were, you know, you didn't, they didn't allow a lot of running yards. I think um, Seattle only finished with like 70 yards rushing, I believe. I'm not sure what that, what that number is, but it was, it wasn't, it wasn't over a hundred. So I think that we did a solid job of holding it down and, and trying to play with some energy and pop. But, you know, when you got Schwartz come out there and say, hey, man, <laughs> hey, Metcalf. You know, I used to be the head coach for Detroit Lions. <laughs> and, you know, and Megatron was my receiver. Oh. <laughs> you ain't it. <laughs> Bro, what Schwartz did was the most destructive thing to the offense this weekend. <laughs> You're not it. Defense. Oh. Uh. Yeah, that's not the yeah. way you want to go about things. I mean, yeah, that would be the last it. guy that you know, I know, Maybe he thought that he pregame. was mentally weak. Maybe maybe Schwartz thought that Metcalf was mentally weak and that that would rattle him and he would have a horrible game. Misjudgment of character, I, apparently, right? <laughs> I, he misjudged a lot of things. I mean, Big misjudged, for you, mis, I, I... misjudged the, uh, the ability to, to cover the guy. I mean, I don't, I don't fault so much of that on um, Darius Slay being as though as a coach, you know, you saw early and often that, you know, the whole man to man thing. I know we paid the guy to be like the shutdown corner, but if your guy is having, you know, problems with a more bigger physical guy, like make it easy on him, give him some help. Like he kind of put him in that situation. And I think that's where the ego kind of took place. You know, because, you know, Jim Schwartz, he's like a tough guy, you know, like no nonsense or whatever. But in that in that situation, I think he should have helped his player out a little bit. You know, you're getting torched by this guy. I mean, hey, help me out. Put somebody over the top or at least let's let's, let's double this guy. Like, let's let's kind of like get out of this ego thing where, you know, he's their number one guy and I'm the number one corner over here. And let me just follow this guy all over the field when, you know, he's having like a career first half. Like, I, I just thought that was bad coaching. <laughs> I mean, especially after you went in there and threw a grenade in there and just like, hey, you know, Metcalf, this is what I think about you. And my player is going to shut you down. I'm out. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then next thing you know, 177 yards later, and I mean, he dropped a touchdown. I, you know, yeah, yeah man, hey, he got roasted, man. You know, and, and Metcalf, man, he is an animal, dude. When I, whenever I see him out there on the field, he just reminds me of how T.O. was built. You know, where you got a big guy, big receiver, physical. I mean, you know, single-digit body fat. I never know that life, you know. But, you know, <laughs> that's what he is, man. And, I mean, he is just an animal. I mean, he just went out there and just roasted us. But, 
you know, and, and to think about it, when I heard his press conference and he was saying, look, y'all could have had me, but you didn't. You got J.J. Ortega Whiteside. See, man, like, I kind of, I don't know. I don't look at it the same way just because, you know, they drafted guys here year in and year out. Yeah, granted, the dude's a physical freak. I would have drafted him. But, you know, who's to say he'd be this successful in this offense? Like, we haven't been doing a pretty good job of developing receivers. Like, we did – I mean, we did draft one in the first round this year who's kind of been hurt, jury still out on him. But in, in years past, you know, you got J.J., you got Matt Collins, another early round draft who they released or they traded. You know, I mean, Nelson Aguilar. It's a lot of guys that they drafted at the wide receiver position that – that didn't do good here, but they're flourishing where they're at. So I'm like, hell, if we would have drafted this guy, I mean, who's to say he'd be this successful like he is with Seattle? I sure would have liked to have seen it. Because I know what we got <laughs> right now. <will> you? <laughs> I mean, hindsight is yeah. always 2020. Take that gamble. <laughs> take that gamble. Yeah, I take that gamble. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yeah, I take that gamble. A lot, a lot of teams uh, passed up on him. Hell, I think Seattle passed yeah. up on him twice. So it's not like, you know, the whole league didn't notice. I mean, I mean, notice this guy at the time. And you got to understand, mm-hmm. he latched on with the ultimate competitor and a quarterback in Russell, uh, Russell Wilson. Like, this yeah. dude's flying out to Cabo, working out with him in his first year. So yeah. it's like, when you latch him on to, like, somebody as great as that, like, you know, it's it, he's bound to have success. Like, I don't know if he would have been this, this successful in this offense. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. I, I That's a good point, but I sure would have liked to have seen it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. me too. Anyway. Very I mean, well worded. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, I mean, but, but, but you just can't imagine. Cry on the field for though, a minute. Like, I mean, you can't you 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 can't cry, but like the 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 moves have been made, you know. Like the dude is out there, he's a fucking freak. Like yeah. we could have drafted him, <laughs> but we didn't. So I mean, yeah. hey, I mean that's why they went and in, 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 you know, I guess that's why they went and drafted Jalen Hurts. <laughs> they missed out yeah. on Russell Wilson. So you yeah. know, it's a lot of a lot of revisionist history going on, you know. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's just it's. It's going in a situation that this team, man, I I don't know if they're going to be able to bounce back for this because this game here where you had the defense, they were out there trying to give you a little something, but then the offense is lagging, you know. Bro, just throwing Hurts in for a play here, bringing Carson back out for third and eight. Just let him get get mobbed. Bro, what is going on? (laughs) Don't know. I don't know, you know, and, and it's just the energy around this team is just, they are so fortunate. I keep saying this. They are so fortunate that they're in the middle of a pandemic right now, because if that stadium was packed right now, man. Oh, whoo, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I, yes. So, somebody would have lost their job by now. <laughs> oh, yeah. The you amount know, of booze. <laughs> Oh, it, it would be ridiculous, man. If, if fans were in that stadium right now, man, I, I, the heads would have been started to roll because, I mean, you know, they can't – when it's right there in your face, it's totally different. 100%, bro. Well, I don't know. I've never experienced uh, – uh, I don't know what you even call it, digital booth, you know, like they experienced yeah. earlier. Yeah, like, you know, like we were saying, man. I'd imagine, I'd imagine, I imagine that hurts pretty deep right there. Yeah, it, it cuts because that's deep. coming from the organization. The organization's booing you at that point. Yeah, there's a guy that's like, you know what? I'm the, I don't like that. I'm hitting the switch. Boo! There you go, right there. That's right there. That's the button right there that you get right now for that play that you just. I don't like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah and the something. Eagles pay him his checks to do that. So essentially, yeah, yeah that's the organization booing. That yeah. cuts deep, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that does. <laughs> that does. That, that, that does. When you put it like that, I guess it does have a, a, a but certain. Yeah. yeah. If the stadium cool. was full, it would be deafening. Oh, yeah. It would be yeah. deafening. It would be deafening. Jake Elliott would probably, man, they would probably oh. run him up out of there, man. You can oh, go out. You, 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 dude, 
Here's the he thing. He has to have Big Dom walking him around. Oh, yeah, he would have to have Big Dom walking him around all the time. I mean, that would be it. Like, going to – no no going to Chicken Pete events for you. No, no, you're not – you know, you, you need to stay home. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, it's just – that, like, it's just so much going on with this team. I, I, to me, I think that it's 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 a wrap. I think that once this season is over with, they are going to blow this thing up. You know, because one of the things going into this season, everybody thought that, hey, you know what? We have the sturdy group. We have we have a leg up on everybody because we have all of our coaches returning. All of our organizational pieces are in play. Everybody else has new new coaches, new new um, situations and everything going on and they have to, you know, teach it all by Zoom. Hey, we're all right. Our team is good. We already have a sturdy nucleus. Yeah, it's not working out. Well, what do you, what do you, what do you think? Like, is this, uh, is this a, a, a product of just so many things bad happening at once all at the same time? Or is this like um, – a boiling over of a bunch of different issues that had been ignored and not addressed earlier to like cut them off before they turned into a big problem. I think it's a boiling over, you know, of things that, that have been, that you have allowed to slide, that you have allowed to just go Maybe on. Maybe the Super turn. Bowl covered it up a little bit. You, you were know? successful. So you were successful. So you turned a blind eye to certain things. You kind of let got you let things slide. And then now it, you you find yourself in this situation. I mean, they have a, a salary cap. They're in salary cap hell. You know, you got guys that are you know that probably shouldn't have been brought back or whatever. You know, different situations just because you like the nostalgia of having everybody around that you won the Super Bowl with. But it's just you know it's not it's not panning out. It's not panning out. <laughs> it probably should have made some of those hard decisions. Uh, right after the Super Bowl so that you can continue to be successful. Instead, it seems like you kind of let things kind of drag on and now you find yourselves at 3-7-1 and, and it's too late to fix. Yeah. Am I? Yeah. It, just the way I see it. Well, I mean, yeah, they're not going to fix it this year. Right? They got to figure out, first and foremost, who's to blame? Because I know everybody's over there like, you know, because <laughs> it's a mess right now. Like, like, like you did it, you did it. No, we did it. No, like somebody got to pay for this. So, mm -hmm. you know, and all this stuff is starting to leak out. And, you know, I just, I, I, I really, I do feel bad for Doug, you know, because I don't think he was playing with a full deck from the start. Like you said, mm -hmm. Ty, when you win the Super Bowl, that covers up a lot of things, you know, you get it, you get the book tour, you know, you're under the limelight, you know, we're not worrying about the, the, the small details, the little things. And we start to lack in our preparation. So, you know, all of the uh, the underdog talk. And then the year following the Super Bowl, when I think they made it, what, to the second round? Or mm -hmm. there was like a catch away from going back to the NFC Championship game. Um, you know, all that stuff, all that success, it covers up a lot of the deficiencies that goes on. And now all this is starting to spill out right now because, of course, the team is losing. So I mean, it's it's just a mess right now, and I don't I don't think at this point in the season, I don't even think putting Jalen Hurts in there turns anything around. It just no. lets you know what you have in the backup quarterback. That's it. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think that it's going to really solve any big issues. I mean, the way this offensive line is protecting, man. You know, again, you come out of there with another game with six sacks, twelve quarterback hits. I mean, you know, right now you have forty six sacks. 111 quarterback hits so far in 11 weeks in, man. Though, you know, Carson's got to be one of the toughest cats I know, man. I mean, with that I've seen out there because he get his head knocked off on the regular. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to say no fault of his own, but, you know, he, he's attributed to a couple of little sacks. Like, <laughs> yeah, he holds yeah. on to it for a, lo for a long time, man. Like, yeah. you got to let that busy go. Like, yeah. fuck it. you know – my line, your line is inexperienced. They're playing out of place. They, you don't have all your horses. Like, instead of that mental clock being four seconds, they got to be 2.52. You got to get rid of it. Like, mm -hmm. it's not like it's not like you, you've been successful hitting guys down the field all year anyway. Mm -hmm. So just take what the defense gives you, and, you know, it'll lessen the blows off of yourself. Because even last night, you know, I know the protection wasn't great. They did give up. Oh shit! A handful of sacks and then some, and 
Yeah, and 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 he got hit a whole hell of a lot of other times. So, mm-hmm. but you know, a lot of that things, a lot of that stuff can be avoided. And I think even even in most cases, he tried to avoid it. But you know, I just think the play calling and everything around him made it even worse. You know, mm-hmm. to me, whenever we've seen like good quarterbacks or or. or decent quarterbacks in the past that have come to this point where they're just struggling they seem overwhelmed we've seen offensive coordinators in the past just simplify things like dummy it down you know what I mean like lean on the run make it more two-dimensional offense where you're running the ball and then throwing play action off of it and you can see these quarterbacks thrive like almost when um almost like they're in, got a sense of relief. Like they, they don't have to carry everything. And that's what I thought like we would have seen happen to Carson, you know, at least this game, if not last week, at, at least this game, but, you know, moving forward, if they're going to keep him out there, they got to simplify it for him. He doesn't have to think so much. Just let him go out there and, and react and play and let the other team, let the rest of the team pitch in, especially, like you said, man, how inexperienced the line is right now. You got guys playing out of place. Like, bro, it's it, it. I struggled watching Kelsey and Peters out there because these guys are warriors. Kelsey was on his hundredth consecutive start. Uh, Peters was out there on some sort of dislocated, broken toe, you know, and, and yeah, playing out of position. When you got this inexperience, why aren't you just running the ball and letting these guys like try to overpower the defense rather than trying to out scheme them with protection? Obviously, protection isn't working out. You know what I mean? It's not doing that well. All right. Um, like the pocket's collapsing. Peters is playing out of position for the first time in a game. So you notice how shallow that pocket was. He wasn't setting like a guard. He was getting some depth and yeah, it just was kind of out of whack over there. And you know, for Kelsey to have all that happening around him, everybody on different levels, man, it, it was a mess. They need to get down to the basics of running the ball and throwing play action, if, if you ask my opinion, dude. Do some and, nakeds. Do some rollouts. Like, Yeah. And I, 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 I would even go a step further uh, to say, you know, even when they do come up with the game plans and, you know, we see how the offense kind of like sputters out the gate. They had like five or six three and outs. They didn't get a first down until like the second quarter. And I think where they were most successful at was the hurry up because that allows the quarterback to dictate the plays. And if I'm giving him all the control, let him call in the offense, he's going to be comfortable with that because he knows he, he, he's calling the plays. Like, mm-hmm. I think it's a clash between the plays Doug calls and the plays that Carson wants to run because it doesn't look smooth at all. It's always three and out, three and out, three and out. Now we got to figure out uh, this, this trick play or this, this, this play to spark the offense to get us going. Mm-hmm. You know, when, when they jump into that hurry up, that's when you start seeing that flow. He was hitting tight ends. He was hitting the backs. They was getting the running, the run game involved. You know, I, I think they should do more of that. You know, that'll, you limit help, the defense. that'll help him. Yeah. You limit the defense and what they're able to do. So you can see it easier when you're, when you're trying to hurry things up like that, you know? And I think that would suit him better to, to be able to see things a little, a little easier. Um, but man, it's a mess right now, bro. Yeah, it yeah. is. <laughs> that it is. That it is. Well, before we go any further, let's pay a couple bills right quick, man, from manscaped.com. Jingle balls to the walls, fellas. Listen up. Untrimmed pubes are a thing of the past. It's time to gear up and get yourself the gift of shaving this holiday season. I'm talking about the Manscaped Perfect Package 3.0. This Manscaped is a revolutionary company that has redesigned the electric trimmer. Their Lawnmower 3.0 has proprietary advanced skin safe technology. So this trimmer cut, will not cut your nuts. It's also waterproof, so you can use it in the shower. The Lawnmower 3.0 comes inside their brand new Perfect Package 3.0, which makes for the perfect gift this holiday season. It's literally everything you need to keep trim cut free and smelling lights down there. And don't use the same trimmer you use on your face as you use it on your balls. That's just nasty. The Manscaped Perfect Package 3.0 also includes a crop preserver, an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. You already put deodorant on your armpits. Why are you not putting deodorant on the smelliest part of your body? And yes, your balls do stink. 
Speaking of sweaty <laughs> and sticky balls, I'm thankful for their crop reviver. This product, along with crop preserver, keeps your balls from sweating, smelling, and sticking. And these products smell good. They're mainly scent and attractive and will help set the mood, if you know what I mean. The perfect package will also come with a pair of Manscaped boxers that keep your junk feeling fresh all day. It's time to upgrade those overused pair of boxers to Manscaped high-performance anti-chafing boxers. Tis the season of Manscaped, so get yourself, your dad, your brother, and friends the best gifts of all, the Manscaped Perfect Package 3.0. Get 20% off plus free shipping when you use the promo code TAIL, T-A-L-E, at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. All right. Let's Woo! talk about this because we're gonna have to just go ahead and get into it. I, you know, we touched on it a little earlier. <laughs> JP moving to right guard. When the announcement came, you know, at first I was just like, man, how, you know, you you wait until first of all you have Lane. First, okay, before I even go to JP switching, let me go to Lane. Lane comes out. He leaves the game because they said it was a neck and shoulder injury. Then he comes from, you know, comes out of Thanksgiving and says, hey, man, I'm done. I'm shutting it down because of my ankle is collapsing. How do y'all feel about that? Hmm. I mean, it's kind of a, it's, it's a it's tough a, one. If it's a, if his ankles hurt, his ankles hurt. Fine, yeah. don't play. Yeah, you know don't I mean? play. Let it go. You know, it's it just to me. It just probably seems... too little, too late. You know, he probably should have rested it a while ago if it was really that bad. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and he had like a he had like a couple injuries though. Yeah, you he know, had a tight. It was like the yeah. ankle, the knee. Yeah, he had yeah, the tight I mean, rope that's... surgery earlier in the um uh, in training camp where they did the uh, the same surgery that Tua had a couple guys where they go in there and repair. I don't know what it is, you know, so this new age ankle surgery. So, he, yeah, he had that. But, I mean, I mean I think he's I'm probably been going think through it this part, season. Yeah, yeah. He, he's just trying to, like, gut it out with the guys. Like, I mean, I would never question his toughness per se, you know, mm -hmm. but it's just a, a point of, you know, at what point do you start considering, you know, the long, long, long term ramifications of keep, keep on playing on it. And, you know, with six games left, you kind of – the last ditch you ride, I mean, you gave it all you had. I mean, this, yeah, you this, gave this it all season you had. is going down the drain. It's going down the tube anyway as it is. It don't, don't, don't seem to be like you'll be playing with the same guys that you will be next year. So, mm -hmm. you know, just, you know, just get better and get ready for next year because you, you can't save anything about this year, no matter who comes back for them. Yeah, no, this, this season is a wrap. Yeah, yeah it, I mean – I mean, I know Lane, and, and, and he's, he's about as loyal as they come and wants to be out there, especially if Kelsey and Peters are still out there. Right. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if he could go, he could go. Uh, he would go if he could. So if he's hanging it up, he needs to get some work done or, or, you know, he's not able to play right now. The thing that bothered me the most, I guess, is, you know, when, when he talked to the media about it, I saw a quote that said something about, you know, his ankles collapsed, it's too painful or something like that. And, th and then he's like, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to shut it down. And then he said, the anxiety. And then I was kind of like, you know, w w why does that even fit into this? Is it, is it the anxiety or is it your ankle or, you know, w what's the deal here? You know, it, mm -hmm. is your ankle hurt? Do you need surgery on your ankle? Or is the ankle causing so much anxiety that you shouldn't keep playing? And, and I just feel like we've reached a point where players talk too much about their own injuries. Yes. I remember when we played we weren't we allowed to speak on our mm -hmm. own injuries on anybody else's injuries just let the uh qualified professionals talk to the media about your injuries mm -hmm. and i think that you know we need to get back to that yeah. just freedom of information is just a little too much right now especially when you know training staffs are trying to keep things under wraps or or not hide them but just you know unnecessary information doesn't need to be out there mm-hmm and it's like anytime anybody gets a boo-boo, they go run and tell it. Hey, hey, you know what? Hey, I had a surgery during the offseason because that was one of the things that um, Big <clears throat> Sam Alu came back. He was like, hey, man, while I was down, I ended up having to have a surgery on my knee. Like, what? why is everybody giving all this information? 
I know that you want to get fans involved or whatever, but to me, it just feels like, you know what? Just let the pro, let, let, let the training staff handle that. You just go play ball, man. Don't worry about trying to push all that out there. It's okay. You know what I'm saying? Everybody doesn't need to know everything. That's just how I feel about it. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, I mean given that, you know, his, his teammate, one of his good friends on the team kind of deals with anxiety, you know, I don't know the, the place that he was coming from with it as far as what angle, but, you know, if he's mentioning it, then it pretty, it probably had to affect him a great deal, you know, cause mm. like you yeah. said, he is one of those guys that he's going to try to fight it out with his team. I mean, he's always been that, you know, I'm a, you know, the alley type of guy that you want to, you want to go to war with and, you know, he's shown that in the past, you know, so, I mean, I don't know what he, what, what, what he meant by that, but you're right. Like there are two, it's, it's too much freedom being handed out. You know, Big Red mm-hmm. would always tell us never talk about your injuries. Yeah. And I, I think that's one of the outliers of winning the Super Bowl. You give players extra freedom. Like mm-hmm. that wasn't a thing before the Super Bowl. Yeah. You know, they, they weren't allowed to talk about injuries or, I mean, I could be wrong. I don't, I don't know how it was when Chip, was the was the coach but you know i i, I kind of saw a, a turnover nobody from... was hurt bro remember nobody got hurt we were sports science yeah oh, yeah. yeah it was a lot of sports science dog. Oh, okay so we yeah drink, <laughs> drinks we had fancy smoothies all the time it was awesome injury free yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i mean yeah you're right man they, they they do need to like you know kind of keep that shit on the wraps man because you know too much information then you got other people having to like answer to to it during the media then your coach is blindsided because he don't know you said this to such and such and it just causes a problem mm-hmm. all right so now that we talked about lane now we got to talk about mr peters switching over to right guard what was y'all take on it when you first heard this announcement because i know this was something that they tried to implement during training camp and for me, I just felt like, you know what, to make a switch like this, and I even tweeted it out. I like to make a switch like this at this point in the season could be kind of dangerous because, I mean, you know, you, I don't think people really understand the muscle memory that has to happen for you to get ready to go to war on a Sunday. And I mean, you know, to just say, hey, man, you know what, you just came back from Thanksgiving. Hey, all right, we're going to put you at right guard. Knowing that you're not going to get challenged in practice to get you up to speed to when you know you know to what you need, yeah, at least you can get pushed a little bit in training camp to get you ready. But when you're making this switch like this in the middle of the week to get ready for a game, I just felt like that was just real risky. What did, what was y'all take on it? I think when when they said that Peters was going to play right guard earlier this year, I was all for it. I was geeked. I thought that Peters would be. Uh, an amazing guard. I think like he could be a, an all pro at guard if he had the time to put in and, and get the reps right and feel comfortable mm-hmm. and be out there next to Lane, you know, someone that is comfortable next to him and, and be next to Kelsey, who's another all pro caliber player that, you know, you sandwich him back in the middle between these two. That's a, a, a formidable force. Mm-hmm. Um, but as everything's gone down and then he came back and was playing left tackle, you know, not at a super high level, but still able to do it. And, you know, obviously if he got some more reps in for his muscle memory, keeping his weight inside, he would have been able to, to improve on that position. But I just think moving him over to right guard right now was, was, was tough, especially for him, you know, and, mm-hmm. and now seeing him in the game, a guard, it, it just, yeah, he needs more work in there. He was, he was moving almost too much, you know. Uh, he was getting on way different levels than uh, Kelsey mm-hmm. and, and the guard. And, you know, there was times where certain things looked clean and, and they handled certain exchanges well. But I would say overall, it just kind of looked like he hasn't had much time over there, you know. Mm-hmm. And and I think he, maybe it could have been better suited keeping him over on the left side at this point, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, to me, I, I felt like the natural move was to bump him down to left guard. But I know you yeah, got that's... eyes. Yeah, it, it just would have been a more natural transition to bump him down to left guard instead of taking 100%. him over on the other side of the field. I mean, the other side of the ball and, and putting him in a right handed stance. Now, I'm going to tell you now, when I went back and watched it, and there were a couple of times when I was like, all right, JP, you know, if you have some time to work it, you know. Yeah. 
And that's yeah. what they were. They were blowing people off the ball a couple of times, like yeah, five, and, ten and yards down the field. And that's what I was trying to tell you last night, man. That if you slide him inside, like even given the the injury, because I, I believe it's his left foot, because I saw him favoring it a little bit, you mm-hmm. know. Um, I I I think he's more than capable of handling that. Even even if you got. You know, well, if you got to be thrusted in that situation last minute, because you're not really dealing with the more athletic guys, and he, at this point, he can't he can't handle those guys at, at left tackle anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. it, it's it's well, been a struggle for him this year, and he's been he's been hampered with injuries. So you know, the older you get, the more injured you get. You know, you lose some of your athletic ability. So you bump mm-hmm. down the guard. I thought I thought it, for him to play that position. And only practice it what a handful of times. I thought he played pretty well, like because yeah. I was watching those double teams and those switch offs. He was doing good. I mean, he was he was a little out of position, but yeah. he still had enough athletic ability to recover most times. Because I'm like, damn, that double team that him and Pryor, man, they took some dude to like the safety, and I was like, yeah. that was pretty good. You know, uh-huh. I hadn't I hadn't really seen that out of him because he plays left tackle. So mm-hmm. I mean, with more, well, you work, know. It, 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 I mean, I, I, th- I think he should be, he should stay at that position for the rest of the year. You know, well, with what, if he well, well, with what, with what you said, Jack, if it is his left toe or his left foot, then that makes sense moving him over and flopping sides, you know, because you're not pushing off your toe as much when it's your post foot. I was trying to yeah. tell you, man. I was and you know what I'm you. saying? Like, yeah. he, was, he was, he was losing inside on that left side pretty easy because yeah. he's not able to, like, push back in and, and redirect yeah, inside as quick right. and cut people off. So maybe that is the move to keep him over there, just get him some more work and get him a little more comfortable. You know, he, he does have a different tackle over there too. It's not like when he was practicing, getting ready for the season, he was working with Lane, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Now the thing about it, Joe, when he, when he was getting beat inside or whatever, but then you could see him go back to that left-handed stance really quick, yeah. that post foot drops. You're back in the left-handed stance, and then now you're giving up the lane to the quarterback. I thought, you know, for like I said, and we all agree, for it for this quick switch, for for the switch to be made this quick, I thought it was okay. Well, you know, I, I mean, given the circumstances, yeah, I, I thought it was a good, you know, an it, effort. I thought it was okay. I, you know, I, I, but I, I still think that this line at times man they ignore the rules of protection you know you you ignore the rules of protection sometimes you slide sometimes you don't you confuse the back at times hell kelsey might snap it he might not he might put it over their head you know what i'm saying it's all over the place right now man and it, you know to me i think that the problem with this line is that yeah you you have a lot of injuries or whatever but i think too that you ignore the rules of the game too many times and that's going to cause problems and I see, and, and, and they like to use that excuse a lot, like injuries. Like, yeah. come on, man. Like, you know what it is, offensive alignment. Like, we don't have any rest periods. There should always be a period going where we're, we're, we're switching off games, we're redirecting, we're not making a call, we're just doing it on instincts. Like, I don't think that's drilled because no. they get beat on games every single week. I see it all the time. And I'm just like, this can't be – a point of emphasis at practice. It can't be. No, because they get beat with the easiest games. I mean, just yeah. like a, a, a TE, they get beat with a, a, a tackle in where it's going to be the defensive tackle is going to be the penetrator. The end is going to be the looper. And it's just like, no, it's almost like they get hit with it and they want to be like, oh, time out, time out. You mean to tell wait. me y'all can do that? Wait, wait, wait. Do that again. Do that again. Let me say how yeah, that. Like, I mean, you, we saw, you saw the, the, the first one that kind of happened. Um, I think it was uh, Isaac in the uh, the left tackle. Uh, uh, Big Jordan. Jordan. Left side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, see, now had he vertical set instead of five and posting, he, they wouldn't have got split. Yeah. yeah, but there was no punch. There was no punch delivered and, and yeah, on, no on punch. the near point. Him. You know what yeah. I mean? Like but, it's just but the drills, even, the drills. But even even without a punch, his set would have taken care of it because he would have been in dragged. position. Yeah, he should have yeah. dragged. Yeah, yeah he should have like, been why, vertical. Why, it, like, why is he dragging at an angle instead of straight back? Yeah, and then it was a delayed te. They had a chipper coming off the edge. 
you know, uh, to me, I, I just feel like anytime they get a game, man, they have, they, they, it's almost like, wait a minute, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. We didn't talk about this. I didn't know that you guys could do this. I mean, they get beat with games on the regular. And it's yeah. ridiculous. I mean, they get picked <laughs> apart. Yeah. You mean to tell me it's not one on ones? <laughs> yeah. It's not just one on ones? <laughs> what do you mean? What are you, what are you? What are you guys doing? What do you call that? What is that? I mean, they get beat with the simplest games, and, and, it, and it's frustrating to see it because you look at it, and it's like, dog, how did you just get beat with this simple three man game? I mean, this is simple. I mean, you know, this is not, but, but again, Juan used to drill us, drill us so much it, on it. It, it, yeah. it has to be, it has to be a focal point in, in pass pro. Hell, you know you're gonna you're gonna drop your quarterback back like 50 times a game. So I mean, why not? I don't yeah. know, I don't even know why they work on run blocking. Well, they abandoned it every game in the first half. You only had 14 rushes this game. And five of those. Could have been five of those could be attributed to passes because the quarterback ran. Yeah. Well, yeah. He, he, Car- like Carson he, was your leading rusher. You give Miles Sanders is supposed to be your workhorse. He had eight carries, right? Six. Six. He had six. Car- they had eight, like almost eight carries. They rushed the ball like eight times, like out of the like handing the ball off <laughs> six, and then he yeah. gave Corey Corey Clement had a rush, and I think Boston Scott had a rush. Yeah, he had two. Oh, okay. So yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then you know, yeah. and then Wentz, Wentz had a couple scrambles, and then you had that one draw. You know, man. I, you know, to me, I, I don't get it, especially when you have a group that that can't, that's not doing a good job protecting. Why not go ahead and take advantage of what they can do well and just run that thing, man? And bro, it's not like we're it's not like we're getting the break speed off of us. It was a close game. Yeah. You don't have to air it out like that. As a matter of fact, it would do you some solid to go ahead and, and eat some clock up and keep Russell Wilson off the field. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But because you get down to the fourth and four, like I, was that a fourth down play? Yeah. Yeah. Instead and of the, just saying, you know what? Yeah. It's just saying, man, you know what? Let me go ahead and just get this field goal. Let's get three points and get on out of here. Oh, no. Nah. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. We're going to call this fancy play. Let's go with this real nice play, and then bam, there you go. Another another interception added to the total. I mean, it's like, you know, you're, you're watching the game, and I'm just thinking, the whole time, I'm thinking I'm playing Madden. Like, I'm like, yeah, man, I'm going to kick it right here. Cut it to eight. Fuck it. <laughs> going for it? What the fuck you doing? What the fuck you doing? <laughs> I'm like, no, the defense is actually playing pretty good. Like, they, they just stopped them. Like why? 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 I, I don't know, man. It's like it's like dog. Was, you, you know, like when you when you play the person you know you can beat, and they yeah. know they, they they know you can beat them, so they don't even try. Yeah. I'm like, uh, dog, like what, what are you doing? That that, that made no sense to me. Like your defense playing as well as they are, and you put the hand you put the game in the hands of the offense who's been struggling all year. Like just. Just take the points, like. Just take the points. I I, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's, uh, it's just beyond me. <laughs> take the points. Take the points. Ty, tell us a little bit, man. Tell us about body check, man. Oh man, body check. What about body check? Uh, body check wellness is a company that was started by a couple of badasses that <laughs> used to play sports in Philadelphia. Uh, they decided to get on a path of natural healing wellness and started a hemp derived CBD company that specializes in CBD products along with, uh, nutraceutical uh, mushroom blends and, um, uh, also dog treats and oils and anything that your heart desires in the world of CBD. You can find it at www.bodycheckwellness.com. That's B-O-D-Y-C-H-E-K-W-E-L-L-N-E-S-S, bodycheckwellness.com. And uh, disclaimer, uh, CBD uh, hemp products will not get you high, uh, which could be confused also with medical marijuana, and that is not what we sell. We sell 
uh, things that help people alleviate stress, inflammation, um, basically anything under the sun that you can think of. It's an awesome product. It's natural and you can replace many a pharmaceutical with it. So if you don't believe me, go to Body Check Wellness and give it a shot. Use promo code BLINDSIDE. That's B-L-I-N-D-S-I-D-E, BLINDSIDE, uh, for 20% off with your purchase. Go ahead and check us out. All right. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, that was good work. Good work. Good work. <laughs> But yeah, man, yeah, it, this is, it's just going to be interesting to see how this plays out, you know, because, because you, what you have Green Bay coming up, you know, and then you have New Orleans, you have Arizona, and then Washington and Dallas. Hey, did you see something about what Doug said, uh, you know, as much as he loves calling plays, uh, maybe it's time that he look at <laughs> another play caller option or something like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I heard. I heard that he he said that Bro, at a press conference earlier. Who? Yeah. Who? The question. Who? 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 who, who, who. <laughs> I, just, I just think. I think. I, I just think. You know, with that quote, he was just trying to, you know, appease the reporters' curiosity because they keep asking yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I'll think about it. Yeah, yeah. because you know, if it's he, on the if, table, if, if I tell you, like, I love to do this. Like, why would I relinquish it? And I'm the head coach. Mm-hmm. You know, and he, he says it every time they ask him. And he, he regurgitates the same answer. Although today he did say it's an option. So I guess it's on the table. So that's just, you know, a little break crumb, crumb for the uh, reporters. Mm-hmm. He's not giving up play calling. No. Like, he, well, that's probably because there's not like, anybody that could call for him. Uh, yeah. I mean, his buddy's out hey, What do you think? You think Deuce you could know? call plays? I think I'm, pr- Duke- I'm sure he could, but he just never had. I would yeah. love to see Deuce come out there and run the rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah what makes you think Deuce would just run the rock? He's a run game coordinator, bro. Oh, yeah, Is run he- game coordinator. No, but that's we- Scotland. He's assistant head coach. Yeah, because I was like, he can't be the run game coordinator. Not, run- not running it eight times. Yeah, no. no, no yeah, when well, you only who- got – Who does that? Yeah. Yeah, when you-, you when you come out of the game where your running backs only had nine carries – yeah. And we threw and we threw that song been like fifty five times. Yeah, yeah, we we had, we had forty five. Yeah, Deuce wasn't the run game coordinator. <laughs> well, we had forty six passes. They don't listen to the run game coordinator. <laughs> yeah, no, no, they they like no, they ignore it. Well, because they go into this game and you go to Seattle, and you're like, all right, you know what? This is supposed to be you know uh, a secondary that's giving up. You know, they 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 were leading the league and you know they're about to make history with all the uh, yards and stuff that they've been giving up with their, their passing defense. So I think that that's why they came out there and just felt like, you know what, we're going to come out here and try to take advantage of this team and air it out. But you start the game off with three, three plays that didn't get you anywhere. But I, I, that, that, that wasn't the wrong idea. It wasn't wrong at doing that. Cause there was a lot, man, those replays last night. Oh yeah, we go back and see. It. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god, the one play, you know, he, left a lot of meat old. on the bone out there. Yeah, yeah, man. Like, like, <laughs> you know, I understand you. You want to have confidence in your guys because I guess I, I want to say the one play he overshot Alshon. Mm. In the very next play, it was man to man coverage. Alshon beat his guy by like three yards. It was yeah. a touchdown. He yeah. didn't throw it to him. Like, he didn't like, look over there. Like, left a lot of meat on the bone lo- out there. It was a lot of plays like that. So it wasn't wrong in trying to attack these guys through the air because, I mean, hell, we saw it. It's just the guys, just, he wasn't accurate last night. Yeah, and I don't think that, it, like I said before, I don't think they force him to see the field either way. So it's always, all right, my first couple reads are always on this side of the field. It's kind of like when you see Carson drop back, he, his head turns to the side that he wants to go to. And rare, very rarely does he go back to the side, even though he did have that one touchdown that he worked in there to Dallas where he looked left, gave Dallas a little time to come in there and work his route. Then he came back right to him. But other than that, most of the yeah, time when he drops back, he's staring to the side that he's going to. I'd be rushing that bitch out of there too. I ain't got no time to throw it. No time. Getting murdered, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's true. That's Every true. time. That's true. I mean, I mean, most times he doesn't have 
uh, how you call it, the the three progressions or whatever. He got the first three one hits check down, and that's one it. One hitch, two hitch. Ah. Right. You ain't got, sometimes you ain't got the time, boy. Because yeah. like Juan would always be telling us, I don't care if it's one hitch, two hitch, three <laughs> hitch. I don't give a fuck. Red hitch, red hey, hitch blue hitch. Is, hey, Jack. Hey, 10 hitches. We block. I don't give a fuck. We block. Whoa, yeah. okay. <laughs> Yeah. I was like, hey, show Jack, me an offensive, show me Jack, an line that blocked for ten fucking seconds. Jack, Jack, <laughs> they got us, they got us, Jack. Yeah, <laughs> one hitch, two hitch, I don't give a fuck. Four hitch, five hitch. <laughs> you block till you hit a whistle. I'm like, well, damn, Juan. I mean, you know, we. <laughs> but all right, one hitch, cool. two hitch, red hitch, blue hitch. Hey, I'm gonna, I ain't got, nah, 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 give it to you, man. I'm gonna give you what you got, man. God, oh. But yeah, man, we hey, it's gonna be interesting to see how this thing plays out, man. Because I, you know, uh, you know I mean, in the next couple of weeks, it's gonna be dreary <laughs> unless we shock the world. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I, mean, I think all three phases needs to kind of like get this thing rolling because the owner is not happy at all. No. You He's know, not happy at all. I've always known Mr. Lurie to be kind of like, you know, up spirited about that. Yeah, because yeah. he come in there bopping, you know, when he comes walking bopping. in there. Yeah, he, he come in there hey, bopping. He got that billionaire bop. You yeah. Know what I'm yeah. Like, so, you know, and when 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 he's unhappy, which I've I've rarely seen him like upset like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, shit. Yeah. I don't know, Heads, man. Heads might roll, man. I'm trying to tell you, man. I mean, you had Doug uh, come out. And he said, "Look, man, there haven't been any insurances on my job. There, you know, I that, there haven't been, you know. Uh, Why would there be, bro? Yeah, <laughs> right now when you three seven and one, I mean, you know, it's so kind of like pat you on the back, be like, don't worry, bud, we got you. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. Jeffrey come in there and just like, hey, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Yeah, you know, keep it just get straight to the point. Yeah. You know, but when you say that billionaire bop. I was just thinking about Ty. You remember when we went, uh, when we, when we, when we, was, uh, when we went to training camp in New the, England? No, 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 not the cookie. But when we, cookie. Went to, yeah, when we, <laughs> <laughs> but when we went to training camp in New England, were you there with us? Uh, wait, I went up to New with, England with Chip. With Chip, yeah, I don't think I went with y'all. Oh, you didn't? Oh, okay, man. Jeffrey flew the helicopter in, man. Land that bitch at the stadium, like whack. <laughs> He and his homies jump out with their Birkenstocks and socks on, man. Like, look, dog, we here. You know what I mean? I'm like, dog, who, who you call to say, man, we're about to land this damn helicopter. I need y'all to move by 15 of these cars out the way because we're about to land this bitch and get on that, man. Go hang out. That's what we about cardigans to do. Cardigans draped. Who is that, old Birkenstocks? Yeah, socks? cardigans draped over their shoulders. Yeah, got their got they cardigans draped over their so- the shoulders. Some, socks. Yeah, some, some, gray, some gray wool socks and some Birkenstocks. Yeah, man. man shit, About to go hit the country it. clubs. Like, you yeah. don't even know. Hey, man, we in here. Let's go. Well, let's kick it. Boy, shit. Some of them ain't even have on socks. You know, you just got the loafers with yeah. the khakis that, that, that's like five inches above the knees. Yeah. In there. <laughs> in there. Hanging. Like, Ooh. what? This how we do, man. But yeah, man, this, this is going to be interesting, man. Before we get out of here, let me get one more, uh, get one more read in here, man. The gyms may not be full. But there's definitely no shortage of madness this college basketball season. For us fans, the college basketball powers that be have gifted us with a top-tier matchup between two powerhouses this weekend. Gonzaga and Baylor will be going toe-to-toe for that could be the nation's top ranking. DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app, is bringing you closer to the action with these can't-miss offers. DraftKings Sportsbook is giving all college basketball fans who sign up now the chance to win $100 when betting on either Gonzaga or Beller to win this clash of Titans. Plus, you'll get a deposit bonus of up to $1,000 when, when signing up using promo code SIDE, S-I-D-E. DraftKings Sportsbook has endless ways for you to bet from live betting to betting on your favorite players. They do it all. DraftKings is safe, reliable, and secure, making it easy for you to deposit and withdraw your money at your convenience. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code SIDE, S-I-D-E, when you sign up for your short shot to turn $1 into $100 when betting on either Gonzaga or Baylor to win. 
That's right. Bet $1 to win $100. Use promo code SIDE, S-I-D-E, during sign up to take advantage of these great offers for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older, Pennsylvania only, in partnership with Meadows Racetrack and Casino. Bonus comprised of a first deposit bonus. B- deposit bonus requires 25 times play through. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. I got destroyed yesterday on that game. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah, with the whole DraftKings thing. Well, you know, the, the spread at the time was six and a half. So I was mm-hmm. like, you know what, man, you know, I don't think we're going to be able to cover that spread, man. So I went ahead and, and went with Seattle. I'm like, you know, I don't put my money on Seattle. Because I'm like, yeah, sure, they're going to beat us by a touchdown. Last touchdown. Got no. you. Damn no, Dick that, Rogers. That, 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 that fucking half. Dick, Dick Rogers. Dick Rogers. Dick <laughs> Rogers. <laughs> What are you going to do, man? Dick Rogers <laughs> catches in the end zone. Bam. We win. And they go for two. And they go for two. And they go for two. And we win by six. We lo- Well, we lose by six points. Well, yeah, I don't, think Doug will, I don't think Doug will ever be questioned again for going for two. Never. <laughs> yeah. I said it immediately after they did it. I'm like, all right, well, yeah. I'll never question his ideas of going for two. Just go. For- Use all the motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Use every two point play you got from here on out. Fuck it. Hey, hey, especially the way Jake Elliott is acting out there, man. Hell, go oh, ahead. Man. Dude, I'm like, uh, and I'm actually like, like I'm in tune at this game because I picked their ass to win. I was like, uh-huh. shit, 27, because it, it, it's not going to be 17 9 again. So I was like, fuck it. I'm, I'm, I'm at the edge of my couch. I'm like, oh, there you go, Wentz. There you go, Wentz. And this motherfucker, what, 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 why he missed the fucking kid? <laughs> Oh, Bro, I that just changed the whole tone. Well, right, what? <laughs> that changed the whole tone of everything. It did. Uh, it, it was like the Bro, drive was like, like yes, all we got so like, much momentum <laughs> going into the half. And oh, oh shit, we still <laughs> suck. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, it, it wasn't even a close miss. I mean, it was just like a, a they didn't even, they, it didn't even, it didn't even, it, it didn't hit the pole. It's like no. sometimes you hit the pole and it bounces off. No, it just. Now I didn't even. I, I, I didn't even look at it because I'm like trying to text my neighbor because he's like, "Yeah, man, we're on the board," and I'm like, "Yeah, you know they, this motherfucker." <laughs> 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 I didn't even finish texting him. I'm like, oh, oh well, seventeen yeah. nine all over again." <laughs> there it is, man. Jake oh, it, it was bad, man. He, that, damn. I mean, he did come back and make him. You know, what, a field game, but yeah, hey, damn. Yeah, that, was, that was good. That was admirable. But yeah. I mean, you know, hey. you, know. <laughs> you throw enough shit on the wall, some of it's bound to stick. Yeah, it'll stick, yeah. you know. So, <laughs> it is, man, you know, oh man, well, we'll see how this thing plays out, man, because you got Green Bay coming up, you know, and then we it doesn't get any easier from there. I, I think yeah. they said at one point that. The, the Broncos had a practice squad guy that was a, a, a receiver uh, that they could yeah. brought in to be a quarterback. He they had more yards than us in halftime. Yeah, they had twenty four yards passing. Yeah, and yeah. we had what negative five? Like four. Four. Oh, we had four yards. Okay. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Somebody. It was bad. Yeah. You know. I mean, yeah. they kind of had. They 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 got it back on the track like towards the end of that uh first half when they when they were hairy up you know Carson mm-hmm. made some throws in there to Goddard or whatnot and they started like getting some yards then but sheesh them first five drives I was like five straight three and outs yeah so so tell me this then <laughs> are Doug's first fifteen I mean what, what, is it his first fifteen that's just not working well I mean I wouldn't say that because uh. Prior to uh, this week in Cleveland, they actually drove all the way down. I the thought his first fifteen struggled, looked great last you know? week. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 Cleveland. Yeah, it was nice, you know, because you just came out there and ran the ball. What you had ten plays, nine of them were runs. Well, I guess you know the weather lended lend itself to that. 
But mm-hmm. I mean, still, albeit successful plays until the end. Mm-hmm. So I don't think it, it it probably had nothing to do with the first fifteen. It's just you know uh, I want to say what the first play of the game, the quarterback gets sacked or he got hit, and then mm-hmm. the second play they run it, third play he misfired and missed the receiver over the middle ward. So yeah. And then Alshon dropped the third one, so they're not, yeah. they're not they're not momentum building plays. They don't, you know what I mean? There's nothing that's like creating any kind of momentum or flow for a drive. Mm-hmm. They got, they got to be good on first and second down. Like they kind of always find themselves behind the sticks as far mm-hmm. as the yards go. You know, they always third and long. It yeah, seems. yeah. You know. uh. Huh? So, we'll see uh, how it plays out, man. But before we go, man, Jack, tell us uh, about the salon. Yeah, man. So it's that time of year. It's the holiday season. Fellas, if you want to do something nice for your gals, you know, you can just, you know, hit us up. Seven Zen Hair Artistry. My wife will take care of you. You know, have that lady looking right for the holiday season. I know she wanted to get her hair did, you know, mm-hmm. and things of that nature. So and you can also check out the website, which is Seven Zen Hair hair.com uh where you know you can get a 20 percent off using discount code blindside that's blindside at seven zenhair.com you can also check her out on instagram and youtube at seven zen hair artistry you know so check us out we're located at 523 delcy drive and um hopefully from you guys home Already, there it is, man. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I'm trying to see if she can still put up, put like you know what I'm saying. I asked her about it. Like, I mean, like I said, she can get you a wig. I don't think she can get you a Gumby. Put me, put me something up there, man. Where that thing, how that thing lay up, dog. Uh, you know I don't think we, 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 we not doing the um, how you call it, like the, the internet sorcery. Yeah, you the internet sorcery. Day the next day you got a damn afro. Like, I yeah, man. We, no, we doing man. That. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she can work some wonders on natural hair, but you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I feel you, man. Nah, I cool, feel like man. you're a little too far gone, Trey. Oh, yeah, no, nah, it's done, man. I tried to grow my hair out one time, man. My kids are like that, for real. Like, it, it really looks like a lake in the middle of the forest. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> want you to grow it out for us. <laughs> oh, yeah, it, 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 like, it, it, it's like when you're flying and you see, like, a lake in the middle of a forest. That's not, that how the top of your head looks. Like, all right, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty crappy out of you guys. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> Bro, grow it out. Grow it out. Grow it out. It's it's in too many different areas. It doesn't really come strong. It's, <laughs> so you got a couple. You got a couple rivers, tributaries connecting to the lake. Up yeah, there. yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, yeah. We it's got a couple natural it? springs Ooh. over there and all that. Yeah, man. It's all Ooh. bad. It's all bad, man. We're cool, man. Well, hey, man. It was good seeing you guys again, man. And um. Uh, Hopefully hey guys, shock the world. Positive vibes. Green positive Bay. vibes. Yeah. Green Bay. A Ron. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There we go. A yeah. Ron and, and Le Fleur. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what, though? And, and you get ready to go out there, man, right now. I don't know about y'all, but man, I hate going to Green Bay around this time of the year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's fucking cold. <laughs> yeah, it's cold yeah. as shit, man. It's like that time of year when the grass starts to freeze and you feel like you're playing on like it's like feels a lot harder when you fall. Harder, on. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the the hits like it stings. Yeah. Like the skin, the, the skin stings. So yeah, <laughs> you gotta try to yeah. hit them first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Tell me this, you it's know, because because we've gone to a lot of different stadiums. And Lambeau Field is like kind of one of those stadiums, one of those iconic stadiums that, you know, that, that people have played on. You know, I know they've done some renovations to it, but to me, I always, it was always a good energy in there, but it wasn't like the old Soldier. See, y'all, did y'all ever play on the old Soldier Field? I don't think so. Yeah, I played on it one year, and it was just like, man, when you stepped out on that field, you could just feel it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just an energy about it. And, you know, I don't know if Lambo still has that same effect. They've done a couple of upgrades to it. I just don't like going out there. This you time know, here, the coolest thing about Lambo, I feel like, that, that brings that nostalgia uh, is that walk from the locker room out to the field. It's still that tiny-ass hallway. Mm-hmm. The carpet looks like it's from, like, the 60s. 
Uh, you got to duck down under the doorways if you got your helmet on. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, you know, that that's a really cool part about playing there. But yeah, once you're out there, the additions and everything, I don't feel like it looks like an old stadium. Mm -hmm. um, what, what was your guy? Obviously, other than the link, what was your guys' favorite places to play? I love the vet, dude. Like I, I would, I, I would much rather I, I would take the vet over the link any day, dude. The vet was nasty. It was just rowdy as hell. I mean, it was. Of course, crazy. you would say that to two people that never got the opportunity. Yeah, to play yeah, I never vet. played in it. Oh, you know, I played so. in the vet. Oh. Did you play in the vet, Jack? Yeah, in college. Oh, uh, okay. Go. Yeah, we had a yeah. game. Yeah, we we had a game there. We play uh, Bethune Cookman College at the. Uh oh. <laughs> at the I vet, guess, dude. I guess I, that makes me the odd man out. Dude, I felt the ACL cringing, dude. It was terrible. Yeah, was you can like, just... It's like lumps everywhere. Yeah, it was awful. Bad. It was yeah. bad. You could just go oh. play in some in some high tops. You don't even put on turf shoes. You just... Right. Just, I'm, I'm just thinking, go... you know, we're, we're about to play in the NFL stadium. Man, the Eagles play here. Like, hey, Y'all remember... I'm about to fuck my kneecap up out here, man. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, Y'all remember how loud Arrowhead was? Yeah. Yeah, Arrowhead was so dang loud. I love yeah. playing there. I think yeah. we went there early in our career, and I, I think I stood on the sidelines and just heard how loud it was. Yeah. Yeah. Arrowhead yeah, gets wild. Yeah, we, we, we went there. I like I like New England, although we never won up there. Uh, uh, <laughs> like, we didn't do too well up there. I'm just like, because you know how you drive like through like the little town. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then all of a sudden, the seat is Boom, stadium, yeah. Stadium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seattle's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Century Link's tight. Yeah, that, 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 that 12, man, it, it gets loud there, man. I, you know what I'm saying? And that was the first place that we saw those, um, that I noticed that the, the um, field level suites. You know what I'm saying? Like before everybody started, that's when they used to have the field level suites. That I thought that was kind of cool. But yeah, man, you know. When you just go to different stadiums, you just have, all of them have a different feel. And Lambeau Field, yeah. to me, I, I just wish that they would have kept it more of that original feel, just like I wish they never would have changed Soldier Field. Because it was just something about it, man, when you stepped out on that field that you just knew that, man, a lot of greats have been out here. So you know, you know, you got you got a chance to go to like the historic, like outdoor stadiums. And when we came along, you know, it was more of the indoor stadiums. <laughs> Remember we played in um in, in um St. Louis, right? Oh yeah, uh -huh. Todd. That's when you got hurt. <laughs> but I didn't mean to bring that up to say that. It's just because they don't play there anymore. But mm -hmm. like that stadium in New Orleans, man. Yeah. I hate it. I hate it playing there, but I love like I hate it playing them there, but I love mm -hmm. being but there because it Cowboy was, Stadium, old Cowboy Stadium. Cowboy yeah, stadium. old Cowboy yeah. Stadium. Yeah, yeah. I, I I I do miss the old Cowboy Stadium. The way the field crescent. You know what I'm yeah, saying? And, you know, yeah, yeah, and you know that 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 was all that was always a fun place to go and get a win. You know, because you know, remember when we all rolled up? Who was that that we all rolled up on a double team at one time and tore his knee up or whoever it was? Oh, who was that? Was that Canty? Canty? Yeah, that was Chris Canty. Yeah, Chris yeah. yeah. <laughs> let his ass have my it on double team. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. It happens, man. It happens, man. Yeah, the, the stadium life, man. It was, it was some nice stadiums, man. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. Like like I was telling Jack the other day, man, do you do you remember, like, a lot when you play? Like, like because like now when I look at the highlights and stuff, and I hear, like, the horns and all of that when a score is made, when somebody scores and all that, like, as a player, I never really took the time to appreciate that. You know what oh, I'm saying? Man. And, and it's mean, like I, now I, when I hear that, I'm like, damn, I wish I would have just – Nah. sat back and, and really just a, took it all in instead of just like, all right, on to the next play. Shit. <laughs> you, yeah, it's funny you used to say horns because every time I hear the motherfuckers from the Bucks when they let off that cannon, I think of the 62-yard field goal. We lost. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, so, the yeah, wind, everything stopped. <laughs> certain, certain things like give you that bad nostalgia. Then certain yeah. things is like, all right, that's cool, you know. Yeah, I mean... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I find that it's hard to, when you're just constantly trying to keep your job or just grind away, it's hard to like just be present and just like 
soak it all in, you know? Yeah. What I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you couldn't think about that because you got Juan coming over there with the damn microfilm. Hey, hey, Ty, there. quit looking around. Hit the bag, yeah. hit the bag. That's yeah. fine. Dude, why are we punch. hitting it? Why are we hitting the bag? Like the game is about to start. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, let's get some. You know, hey, one let's get some. Warm up. up your wrist, Todd. Warm yeah. up your wrist. Yeah, he come over there with all the little pictures. You know, what I'm saying we got all the little stacks of pictures that he coming going over. Hey, but that, but that's one thing I do admire about Juan, man. Like on game day, he was totally different. Yeah, totally the calm, reserved. Like he had his shit together. Mm-hmm. During the week of practice, oh man, he was a maniac, man. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't take him some weeks, man. Yo, yeah. how many calories? How many calories do you think Juan burnt in a day during the week? Oh my god, all the <laughs> running that he did. Oh man, <laughs> and, and lack of sleep, sleep deprivation. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, he had a, uh, he had an air bed like in his office. I know, but he doing you, you see the time stamp on some of his cut ups at like three o'clock in the morning. In the morning, yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? So, he was putting yeah. that work in, man. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Talk about putting that work in. He'd call you at like five in the morning during like spring. Like, what are you doing, Juan? Hey God, Jack, I was the... just thinking. I was just yeah. thinking, you know when they roll the safety the down weak side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Juan, it's uh it's it's June. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. We'll cover it later, but we're going to get it in. Yeah, man. Well, you got to love it, man. Well, man. Well, cool, man. Hey, dog, hopefully we get this win in uh, the cheese heads. Go birds. Go Go birds. birds, Go birds. Go birds. (laughs) All right, right, man. To the next time. Yes, sir. To the loo, motherfucker.